So like the title says, this is gonna be my top 10, top 10, whatever. My most used keyboard shortcuts for the edit page within DaVinci Resolve. Now, anytime that I'm going to say Alt, obviously if you're a Mac user, this is going to be the option key. Uh, but I use Windows and I've always used Windows, so I'm going to be always saying Alt. So just know that that's going to be option. Uh, all of these are pretty much, as long as you didn't change your uh, settings for the keyboard, these are going to uh, be the defaults for DaVinci Resolve. You can obviously go in and change them if you want to by coming over to the DaVinci Resolve up here and then going into keyboard customization that allows you to change every key. You can also see what every key is currently programmed for, but yeah, that's an option. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to let you know about my website, jrtv.com, where we have hundreds of different templates available for DaVinci Resolve 17, 16, and 15. All of them are backwards compatible with the newest version of DaVinci Resolve. If you haven't taken a look, the selection of templates is pretty diverse with everything that you would typically think when you think templates, everything from titles, transitions, infographs, logo stings, slideshows, video displays, video effects, compositing elements, as well as a bunch of color pre set tools specifically for DaVinci Resolve's color page. If you're interested in taking a look for yourself, there's a link in the description. Uh, so the first one that I'm going to do is going to be zooming. So if you know where zoom options are, it's this little bar right here. And then we have these dynamic zoom options as well that allow you to just see everything on the uh, timeline. Um, so if I was to add more onto the timeline, it's obviously going to constantly be changing that zoom. But let's say we aren't going to be using that and we just wanna use the normal uh, zoom here. Well, one thing that I like to do is hitting down control and minus or plus right next to the backspace allows us to zoom in or zoom out, depending on how big our timeline is. But yeah, so that's going to be the first one that I use is zooming in and zooming out. Again, control minus or plus on your keyboard. The next one that I use quite frequently is if I ever need to change something and maybe make it a one second uh, change, right? So I wanna move this one second. So to do this, we're going to be holding down uh, shift and then we're just going to use our arrow keys back and forth. And as you can see over here in the time, we're moving one second. If we don't have shift held down, it's going to go single frames at a time. Holding down shift, we can move in one second increments. So that's going to be another big one that I use quite frequently. Next is going to be fast forward is a big one that I use. And this is how you take uh, like two, three hours worth of footage and be able to edit edit it down in half of the time. This is something that I use to get through like conversations. If there's an interview or something like that, and I need to take ums and uhs out, uh, I will use fast forward. So to do this, we're just going to be hitting L on our keyboard and that's going to be the play. But if we hit it again, it's going to allow us to increase. Um, it's going to allow us to increase. Hold on, let me make my timeline a little bit longer. It's going to allow us to increase how, how fast our playback is. So if I was to hit it, right? So that's just going to be one X, hit it again, two X, and then it's just going to be multiplying that by, uh, by two. So we have that. And then also if we hit J, that's going to allow us to go in the opposite direction. And then the key right in the middle, which is uh, K, that's just going to be an, a way to stop it, right? But you can always just use your space bar if you wanna stop it as well. So yeah, fast forward using J, K, and L. Well, fast forward and reverse and stop, yeah, J, K, L. Next is going to be to jump to different cuts. So if we have a pretty compl complex edit, so something like this, right? And we want to jump from the different cut points, the way we're gonna do that is the up and down keys. So that allows us to jump to each and every cut. Sometimes that's necessary depending on where we wanna line something up. So if we want it to be lined up here, it just allows us to go through the timeline a little quicker to each specific cut. So then we can add on um, something if we need it to, to a specific cut. That becomes, um, Something that is very necessary when you start layering stuff on and you're just pulling stuff right from your uh, media pool and dropping it down because you want it to line up. So yeah, that's something that I use quite frequently. Next is going to be 
Uh, this is more for people that are just getting into editing and this is going to be using the razor. So obviously you can come up here, you can get the razor and then you can clip it wherever you want. Or instead of doing that, what we can do is we can use the playhead to be the razor, right? So a lot of the times where we'd be watching something we're like, hey, I wanna cut this right here. So not having anything selected, it's going to cut everything um, on that area where your playhead is, it's gonna cut all the layers, top and bottom, sound and not, the ones that aren't locked at least. So to do this, we're just gonna hit down Control and B, and that's going to make a slice uh, right there for everything, right? So we have that as an option. If we only wanted to slice one thing, you just click just that one thing, whichever things that are selected, and then Control B, and that allows us to cut that uh, one particular clip, right? So we have that as an option as well. So yeah, just being able to easily uh, use the razor uh, with the playhead instead of having to come in and do it this way, because I know I've seen people doing it that way, and yeah, that's, uh, yeah, don't do it that way. <laughs> so the next one is something that I didn't learn uh, when uh, when I was initially editing for quite a while, and that's going to be a ripple delete. And this is going to be a bunch of actions. And I first wanna show you all the actions that are happening here, and then showing you what this one key can do. So like, let's say we have this long timeline and we wanna cut out a little segment, right? So the first thing we would do, like we just know, we just learned to cut, right? So the next thing I would do is then delete it. And then I would have to click in that little area and then slide the whole timeline over, right? Or another way that you could easily do is just hitting the delete key and that would do that too, right? So currently there's three options that we have here so far, but if we go like this and then we have to click it and then delete it, you know, that's an extra step. So what if we could either cut and delete everything to the left or to the right of the playhead? So these are options and this is what is referred to as a ripple delete or ripple cut. I think it's a ripple delete. I'm pretty sure it's a ripple delete. Uh, and to do this, what we're gonna do is hold down control shift and then we're gonna use our brackets. So if we use right bracket, it's going to remove everything over here, right? Like that. Or if we left bracket, it's going to move remove everything over here to the cut. So we have that as an option as well. And that saves a ton of time. Let me tell you, if you just need to cut off just a little bit on the front there, right, as long as you don't have something selected, we can go like that, delete that. We can go down to the next one. Oh, we need to delete a little bit there. Boom. Oh, this actually, I don't even want this whole area here. So we can just cut off the whole back of that clip. And this allows us to zip through our timeline really quickly instead of having to go in there. Like if we went like that, then we're like trying to click the little button and then we got to use our other control that we learned to zoom in and then clicking it and then hitting delete. Yeah, that, that takes way too long to do. So yeah, learning how to ripple delete saved me a ton of time once I learned it. Sadly, I didn't learn it. So it was editing for a couple of years. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> So the next one, I just had to add in some uh, uh, tracks here that had audio so I can show this off. So I'm just going to cut this quick. And let's say we wanted to have maybe someone in the background, you know, talking about something and we didn't want to have this uh, airplane. We didn't want its audio. So one thing that we could do is we could click this um, to, to, to disable this, right, by hitting D. But what you'll notice is that it's disabling both of them. So uh, I have to show you something else that we can also do. So this is going to be Alt, or like we were talking about, Option. Uh, we're gonna hold down that and click. And this is going to enable us to just select one of two, even though we have linking on. So there are a couple of different ways that you could do this. If we turn off linking and we click, it's just going to click the one. But if we have linking on, it's going to obviously click everything that's linked. If we wanna leave linking on, but this we just wanna disable just this one thing, we're gonna hold down Alt and it's gonna bypass that linking thing and we can click here to just uh, edit just this one thing and then uh, the other one, so this is like actually two different uh, shortcuts that I use often, but the other one is going to be uh, D for disable. So now we can disable that and now we won't have the uh, sound uh, in that, right? So we don't have to be concerned with that. So that's a way to do that. And you can also do this to video clips too. So if I went up here and disabled this, let me just turn this sound off. Uh, we can also see that that is disabled too. So we can leave it in the timeline. Maybe 
we aren't sure if we want it yet. So you can put it in the timeline and just disable it. So to do that, it's going to be D. Uh, and like you can see, I, now that they're both highlighted, if I hit D, it's gonna disable both or turn them both on. Uh, but then holding down uh, Alt or Option, uh, we can hit D to disable just that one thing. And I, that is really good. So if you don't know how you wanna rearrange things and you have them kind of all scattered, it's easy to just turn a couple of things off. Uh, or if you have a couple of overlays, you can highlight all of your overlays and then just turn them off, right, by hitting D. So you have that as an option as well. It's cool to leave things on the timeline and edit around them. And then if you need them, then you can bring them back in. Uh, you never really know. So sometimes removing it is more of a headache than just disabling it and leaving it on the timeline and then deal with it at a later point. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's uh, an option. So the next one is being able to retime clips. So there are a bunch of different ways. I have a whole video going over how to retime clips, but the simplest thing that I always use, I'm just going to remove this stuff for now. The simplest thing that I like to use is holding down control and hitting R and it allows us to retime this, right? So now we can just grab this and we can make it go slower or we can bring it together and make it go faster. So now it's like really fast, right? Or I can stretch it out and have it go really slow. Um, there's a ton of different options for uh, being able to uh, change clip speed, but um, this is the fastest way if you're just trying to zip around your timeline and you don't want to get into like the curves and all that kind of thing, or you don't want to deal with like this little window and all that stuff. So I like to to use just the on screen where we can just stretch it out. Uh, again, that is going to be Control and uh, R to turn on that and turn it off. So now the next one, I just have to bring on an audio track here and zoom in a little bit so you can actually see this. So there's there's two lines here. There's this uh, black line and then right above there's this white line, right? So that white line is actually the line is going to be the volume control. So I can move this up and down for volume control, right? So the next one is being able to make uh, keyframes on there instead of having to like come in to like the point you want and then clicking the keyframe and then coming in a little bit more and then changing it instead of doing all that nonsense what we can do is we can actually work in this particular little window here we just have to be mindful of that line right because that's where we're gonna have to place our keyframes on right so to do this all we're gonna do is just hold down uh, alt or option and then we're just going to click in here with when we have that up arrow and down arrow we're just going to click in here and this is going to allow us to click and make a keyframe as you can see there so we click and we make a keyframe and then we can easily adjust these right so if we would we're in the middle we're not holding down alt uh, it's going to allow us to change those particular areas so let me make uh, some more over here so that this can show you here so we can change those particular areas there right but then if we hold down uh, alt and we click it's going to add another keyframe in there so we have those as options as well so that's pretty cool uh, but yeah so to make keyframes in there you just have to be mindful because this this took me a little while to understand you just have to be mindful of that little gray line in there because that's where you're going to click on if you click on this bottom uh, black line that's not going to do anything so just be mindful of that little line now, the other thing that you can do is you can go like this uh, put this down like that so then you can see this gray line a little bit better again that's just clicking this little button turning off the other options and then having this so that the uh, waveform goes to the bottom and then we can see that line a little bit better right so we can see that line and then we can just simply go like that and then potentially move this up come over here, move this down and so on. Um, so yeah, again, holding down alt or option, then clicking on that little gray line to uh, add your keyframes. So I think that kind of covers everything at this point, but there is one more thing that I guess this would be like an extra one. Um, and that is going to be the, did I unlink these? All right, well, whatever. The other option is going to be, so like, let's say we have a situation where we're in the middle here of this edit, right? And we want to add in a clip in here. So let's say we want to add in this clip, right? So we wanna add this clip in and maybe we're up here and I don't know if you guys know what the source monitor versus the timeline monitor and these, these two different ones, right? But so this is going to be whatever we click over here so we can make in and out points, but maybe you just wanna use the whole clip. So you could make in and out points by just clicking, making your in and out points, or you can just use the whole clip. So if we were to drag this down, we obviously don't have that option. What I like to do instead of using like coming over here and putting in the insert 
or clicking the insert down here. What I like to just do is just hit F9, right? So I pick my thing and then just hit F9, or you can click on a different clip and then just hit F9 and then adds it in. And what that's doing that makes it very nice is it's just sliding down all of our edits. So it's not messing up all of our edits, it's just sliding everything down. So we put that in F9, it just slides down all of our other edits. So we're not, you know, overlapping anything, which that, that is something that I also use quite a lot. Whenever I have to go back and I'm re-listening something, I'm like, oh, I wanna put, you know, a shot of this in here. A long time ago, I used to just highlight everything, scoot it down, then bring my clip in, put it in here, then highlight everything, go back and scoot it back, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Uh, but yeah, so that is going to conclude. I think I did all well. I had to make a little list to make sure I went through all of them. But I think I covered every one of my uh, 10 and then I threw a little extra one in there. So I think that's 11. So I think that concludes pretty much all of my keyboard shortcuts, at least my top 10 that I used, I had to make a little list so that I made sure I went over all of them. And then I threw a little extra one in there. Um, yeah. So yeah, let me know if you guys have used these keyboard shortcuts before, if there are a couple here that you haven't actually, you know what? No, no, no. Scrap that. Tell me the ones that, or tell me the one keyboard shortcut that you use the most, because it might be different than my list. But yeah, this is my little workflow and the keyboard shortcuts that I use. I hope you guys enjoyed it, potentially learned something from it. But yeah, with that being said, my name's JR. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, peace.